All right, now let's start making the pommel. We'll start out with a cylinder. And the number of sides is going to be partially dictated by how high resolution you want your game asset to be. But the only really important factor is that it needs to be a multiple of four. Usually when you're making cylinders, for any purposes, games or otherwise, having multiples of four is going to work well with other modeling techniques. So we'll keep ours at, let's say, 16. And we're going to set the cap fill type to nothing. Right now it's an n-gon, meaning that we have a 16-sided polygon as our cylinder cap. But if we set it to nothing, then we get just the sides. So once we have that, we'll move it into position, scale it down, get it roughly the same size. Possibly move it up so it intersects with our handle. And then we're going to scale it down. So in edit mode, S, Z. There we go. So we'll fill in everything up to this inner ring. So one way I can do that is if I select one side, and we're only going to do one side because we can mirror it across the z-axis later, is that if I hit E with the edges selected, it'll just move them around. But if I immediately afterwards hit S, then we can scale the edges down. So I'll hit E, S, and that will allow me to both extrude the edges and scale them inward. So if I look at this from the top view, we can now continue to scale them until they're roughly the same shape. As you see, it's not aligning perfectly because our reference is being distorted by perspective a little bit, but we can still work with it. Once we have that, I'll move this up a little bit. And this looks like it's curved inwardly. So move this up a little bit higher. I'll insert another edge loop here and then move it down, maybe scale it in a little bit. There we go. So now I'm going to create the actual cross detail. So the way this will work is that I'll first move my cursor here so that I know that it's exactly centered on the pommel. So Shift S, cursor to selected. And then I can add in a cube, and this will come in pretty big scale that down significantly, move it up, and if I look at this from the side, say by hitting 3 on my number pad, I can scale it non-uniformly and move it down until it's just barely above my cylinder. Scale it down a bit more maybe. And then what I'll do is I'm going to extrude all of these side faces. Now if I extrude them all at once, what may happen is that you may wind up with something like this, where they're all extruding as a single unit. So what we need is over in our tools palette, and if you can't see this, just hit T on your keyboard, we go to extrude individual. And now you'll see we have four newly extruded faces. Now I want these faces to get wider as they approach the edge of the cylinder, but if I try to scale them, you'll see I'm scaling them also in the Z axis. Now I could hit Shift Z as I scale in order to get something like this, but you'll notice the reference is a bit more curved than that. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to go over a new type of manipulation for these objects. So far, everything we've been doing has been rotating, moving, and scaling around a median point. 
That is to say that it's being scaled around the center of all of our selected components. So what I can do instead is if I go down here to these two white spheres, I can change that to individual origins. Now what'll happen is that you'll see the polygons themselves are scaled, but they are not scaled as a unit. So what I can do now is I can hit S Shift Z, scale them a little bit, extrude them again, move them out towards the very edge, and then S Shift Z one more time. And you'll see that now we actually have that curvature to it. Might take this whole object and scale it down slightly. But now that we have that, we're ready to combine that with the rest of our pommel, which we'll do in the next video.